Hi everyone, uh, it's been a month since my last video uh, when we thought we were just days away from getting our EV uh, but as you all know it's been a, a strange old month. Um, buying in a car in the middle of a pandemic has its challenges and throw into that the possibility of a no deal Brexit agreement and you have a melting pot of issues. Um, but there's good news and there's light at the end of the tunnel. But let me fill you in on a bit of history first. So back in October we decided to sell Lindsay's car. It's just been sitting on the drive depreciating for months. Um, we'd only ever used one car at a time since Covid hit and we were both, now both working from home for the foreseeable future. Now we know we're going to need two cars at certainly some point in time and, and definitely something bigger than my two-seater um, if only for trips to the tip and to Ikea. And also, we decided our next car would be a, an EV, and, and that's when we started the research on uh, our chosen car, uh, and also when I started these video logs. Anyway, uh, we settled on a Peugeot 2008. Uh, we test drove it at our local dealer back in October, um, and they assured us they'd got a vehicle for us uh, that they could get from another dealer. Uh, so maybe we would have two cars after all, um, but that was when the problem started. Anyway. It, it turns out the other dealer wouldn't release the car as they had a customer for it, yet we had our order placed against it. Uh, the ball was eventually placed into Peugeot's court to arbitrate, but nothing was happening and the feedback from the dealer was useless. And in the end, we just decided to walk away, cancel the order. Um, at the end of the day, we were in no rush and decided we could shop around instead. Um, now, personally, I'd like to uh, bought the car from the local dealer because we'd use them for the test drive and, and questioning and all that sort of stuff and of course they're local from a servicing point of view but but the quality of service through the buying process was really poor and we just didn't have faith in their after service once they've got our money once we bought the car if they couldn't look after us while we were buying then what's it going to be like later anyway Lindsay had a brainwave and that was to use one of the many internet sites out there and, and suggested we have a look at Carwell um, now, based on current experience, I don't think I'd buy a car any other way. Uh, you basically enter the details of the car you want to buy, and then you just wait for the offers to come in as dealers bid for your business. Um, so none of this sitting for hours inside dealer showrooms trying to negotiate, and then the salesman di disappears into the back office to discuss it with a manager who you never see. Um, and then they come out eventually when you come back because they then want to sell you loads of add-ons and paint treatments and gap insurance, tyre and alloys and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you, instead, using the carware approach, you just get the best price offer in an email. Anyway, we had emails from all over the UK, uh, even as far as Durham, and, and we're based in the Midlands, so that's way too far, really. Um, but we settled on an offer it was 1500 quid and cheaper than our local dealer. Uh, it's from a company called Fish Brothers in Swindon. And we basically thought, yeah, that's 70 miles, that's close enough. Uh, be a nice little run out one of the days to go and get the car. Um, so we thought. Anyway, all the communication's been done via Rose, the salesperson at Fish Brothers. She was the one who contacted us via CarWow. All the communication's been done via email and by telephone. And she's been absolutely superb at keeping us informed and updated. Um, she told us the car would be built mid-December, delivered in January, and again, that was perfect. That would just get us through the November lockdown. Um, and then by January, of course, everything all would be great and we could enjoy our new car again, so we thought. Um, the next snack came mid-December. Um, again, the car build started on time, which was great. But what Peugeot didn't tell us, or the dealer, is that the following Monday, the new specifications of cars would be announced and the website would be changed. And what they also didn't tell us is they'd already started building cars to the new spec. Now, annoyingly, the main feature that influenced our choice of car was a retractable sunroof. It was something we'd had on the car that we'd sold and we wanted to keep. And that now not was, was now not available on our model of car that we'd ordered. It was available on the next model up. But of course, what Peugeot hadn't done was build us the next model up. They'd built us the model we'd ordered, which now has a lower spec. So Rose rang us on the Monday, extremely upset about the fact that had happened. It wasn't their fault. Uh, she explained the problem um, and to their credit, instantly offered a solution. Um, they were having a demonstrator built, which would be to the new higher spec car. Um, the build also was in progress. It was the same color that we wanted. 
and if we wanted it that was our car um, at the same price if we wanted that instead um, that was perfect uh, and again great service from Rose and Fish Brothers um, so can't rate them highly enough so far I think there was a little bit of nervousness around as well about a no deal Brexit and potentially tariffs getting added to new car imports so, um, so potentially getting the car delivered before the end of the year um, was also an incentive uh, and we thought we'd end up having a nice little Christmas present as well so that was quite cool. And of course as everybody knows then the southeast version of the virus hit. Um, channel crossings descended into chaos, drivers needed Covid tests to get back to France, airstrips were full of lorries for the Christmas holidays so the, that completely scuppered the plan of getting a car delivered in December. Um, I suppose on a positive note, uh, a Brexit deal was done and the tariff problem went away. Uh, eventually testing was put in place and the channel crossings resumed. So instead we had something to look forward to in the new year. Or so we thought. Um, now we all know what the impact of families getting together over Christmas has been and we're all back in the worst of the lockdown so far and non-essential retail including car dealers uh, are now closed for the foreseeable future um, and sadly many staff have been furloughed again. Um, fortunately this means we're not going anywhere soon and we still don't need that second car um, but to be honest it's boring and would be nice to have a new, new toy to play with. Anyway good news the car has arrived at the dealer and it, a bit of a shame that Rose wasn't working because she's now only doing part-time hours because of the situation and um, because she really wanted to get a video of the car arriving, get a video of it coming off the lorry and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the dealers are only open for click and collect. She wasn't there the day it arrived and that has now raised another dilemma. How do we pick up the car? We're supposed to only travel for essential reasons and is picking up a car from an allowed click and collect service essential travel? Probably if it was local, um, but that's the downside of not buying from a local dealer. It means we've now got a two hour trip each way to Swindon and I'm not sure we're comfortable with doing that. Also, another problem is click and collect only available Monday to Friday, so that also means a day's holiday each to go and do the run. Um, but there's a solution. Uh, there is a cost, but taking into account petrol for my car, uh, a loss of two days holiday, the nervousness of an EV journey home being a long one, and the stress of non-essential travel, um, home delivery seems the perfect solution. So what's even better about this is it's been booked for the 1st of February. So for anybody watching this, it's basically a week on Monday when this was recorded. And this is really something to look forward to because it's Lindsay's birthday and basically it means we can get a new car for Lindsay's birthday, which is a great thing to look forward to at the moment because it seems as though we can do anything else to celebrate birthdays. Uh, again, we're still not counting our chickens. Uh, I mean, this journey has had so many twists and turns along the way that we won't believe it's going to happen until the car's plugged into our charger at home. Um, but rest assured, there'll be a follow-up video as soon as it happens. Finally, one other thing that's been going on in the past month is an update on energy tariffs. Um, as you know from previous videos, we had a smart meter installed and then we changed to a variable tariff with our current provider, which was Bulb. Um, now, while we've been waiting for the car to be delivered, it, it's taken us, given us time to research the tariffs a little bit further and we're now in the middle of a switching process to Octopus Energy. Um, you have to sign up to their standard tariff first, but then once you're live and they've successfully pinged your smart meter, you can switch to their variable rate tariff. And the reason we've chosen it, it's just 5p per kilowatt hour from half past midnight till 4.30 in the morning every day. Now by that, we think, we're calculating that we can basically charge the car one pence per mile. We can't do a full charge in that four hours, but if we keep topping it up when we need to, we think we can drive the car for one pence a mile, which is insanely cheap. Now, if you do the maths on your current miles per gallon and the cost of petrol and diesel, see how that compares, but one P a mile to drive a car, which is insane. Um, the switch to Octopus should also happen on the 31st of January. And on the 1st of Feb, when they ping our smart meter, we should also be able to switch to the Octopus Go tariff, which incidentally is the day the car's due to arrive. Um, so don't you just love it when a plan comes together. Anyway, until next time, stay safe everybody 
Uh, hopefully in the next video we will have gone electric and we'll have some real life experience to feed back to you regarding driving the car, charging, regenerative braking, all the sort of interesting things that we've been theorising around for the past couple of months. So uh, hopefully, keep your eyes peeled, speak to you soon. Take care, bye.